Hello Life Groups, uh, good to be able to be with you and I'm just leading a little study now um, based on Sunday's sermon which hopefully you've managed to hear and it was uh, sort of based on Hebrews 12, certainly read Hebrews 12 and used some phrases from that and the title was finding our place in God's purpose, finding our place in God's purpose and um, I began by asking the question what is God doing and I then used uh, three phrases from Hebrews 12 to take us back into the kind of the whole Bible story really. The first phrase just to summarize it for you was about the blood of Abel so the blood of Jesus speaks a better word than the blood of Abel and we talked about the um, uh, murder of Abel by Cain the first murder in the Bible and uh, how this blood of Abel cried out for justice. It represents all the cries for justice for, um, for all wrongs that have been done in this world and all sin. And we looked at how generations later God chose a man called Abraham who really had nothing to give. He was old, he was unable to have a child. God chose Abraham and Sarah and he used them to begin his redemption plan. And from that line of Abraham came Jesus whose blood speaks not just of the need for justice but that God um, is judged justice is coming God brought took all sin upon himself on the cross and that Jesus is able to give forgiveness to our sins and it re we remember that Jesus will return to bring a full judgment of God on this world the second phrase I looked at was um, Mount Sinai and Mount Zion these two mountains Mount Sinai is a mountain um, found in Exodus where Moses receives the law and I recounted how the people of Israel um, really sort of refused the relationship with God. God wanted them to be a priestly people. That means uh, people who all could come close to God, like the priests. But they didn't want that. And how God accommodated himself to them and to their sin. And how God allowed them to have mediators like Moses and later on priests. I talked about how many generations later in the worst time of the history of Israel in the exile the prophets spoke about a new covenant that was coming that would change all this and how the church is part of the, the answer to that prophecy that the church is a, is a body where each person in the new covenant can know God can be filled with God's spirit and we can all come close. And the third uh, phrase that we used was the shakeable and unshakable kingdom that's mentioned in Hebrews 12. I, I, I uh, reminded us how we know particularly in this last year or two how this world is shaking. Many of us in our generation are seeing that more than ever before but we remembered how uh, the writer of Hebrews reminded us God will return to shake this world on one final day but we are part of an unshakable kingdom and uh, after recounting the whole bible story in this way i just reminded us of three important truths that i believe god wants us to hold on to now firstly that we are to hope in god alone our hope is not in plans or leaders or um, any institution of this world anything human our hope is ultimately in god and it's important to remember that secondly that our calling is to be a priestly people our calling is to be Christ's body on earth. Each one of us knowing God and serving one another, loving God, loving one another and reaching out to this world. And thirdly, that uh, following Jesus actually requires spirit-filled courage. As we see and you're about to read in a moment from Hebrews 11, as we read through Acts in the New Testament, courage is required, but strength and courage comes from God. Once we understand that it's about what God is doing, then we can get on board and we can take part in God's mission. So having summarised it, I just want to give you um, three questions and three things to pray about. Um, the first two questions I think will probably be better done in twos or threes. They're quite personal. And the third one you might want to come back together for. So question one. Who or what are you tempted to trust rather than God? I'd love it if you could try and be honest. Where are you tempted to put your trust rather than God? All of us have this temptation. Why don't you take some time to be honest about that and perhaps pray into it? The second question again in twos or threes, 
How could you begin this year to live out your priestly calling? You are a high priest, that's what the Bible says. Um, and so how can you work that out in Gateway? If you are able to come into the presence of God, if you have gifts to bring, if you also can hear from God, are there new ways that you could serve, that you could bring your gifts? Are you able to be more honest and vulnerable yourself? Are there people that God's calling you to get alongside, to support or be supported by, to disciple or be taught by? There could be other things but how is God calling you to be more a part of the body? You are a member of the body of Christ. How can you live out of that truth this year in our church family? The final question I think is one that you could do all together. I'd love you to read together maybe a few verses each from Hebrews 11. Remembering this is not about great men and women in one sense. This is about what God is doing and how we use weak men and women. But having read Hebrews 11, I want to encourage you to pray. Pray for courage as we begin this year. Pray for Alpha. Uh, if it's t a Tuesday, if you're meeting on a Tuesday, it's happening tomorrow night. There could even be someone you could invite or for the next week. If it's Wednesday night, pray for Alpha that's taking place now for the pe people that are listening to it. Pray for the coming weeks. Pray that there are people that you could invite. Pray and ask God, are there kingdom exploits he is asking you to do in your workplace? Ways that maybe even as a life group, you could begin to step out in your community. What is God calling you to do? What great exploits by his grace, by his strength and power is God calling you to do this year? Maybe something that you want to continue to pray and think about. But let's begin by reading Hebrews 11 together and praying into it together. All right, thank you. Goodbye.